to you, please. Hey there, this is T.O. bringing another KSP video. Today I'll be showing you a basic space shuttle build and launch. This will actually serve two purposes for me. First, I get to show you how absolutely terrible I am at using space shuttles. Second, I get to show you my latest idea for a unique payload. I wanted to make a video for the payload, but I thought it wouldn't be quite enough, so I'm combining those two ideas. So unless you've been living under a rock, you're probably familiar enough with space shuttles. NASA built six of them, and five actually went into space. They consist of an orbiter, two solid rocket boosters, and an expendable fuel tank. The orbiter, which you see on screen, is what everyone calls the shuttle, although the, technically the shuttle is the entire system. And the orbiter is what actually delivers the payload to space and glides back down on the runway when it's time. My build is not super accurate as usual. I do make a few mistakes, which I did not edit out, so you get to see those. And um, on the screen, you see I'm, I'm putting the control surfaces on the wings. I couldn't actually figure out how to get a control surface under the engines. The actual space shuttles have uh, a big uh, aileron or whatever you call it, a big uh, flap under the engines. Um, my payload's going to be empty during the video. I'm going to actually add it in post so you don't see until it's uh, up in orbit. And that's part of the surprise. So yeah, the uh, orbiter itself is almost done. Here you're going to see me fight with the uh, the back control surfaces. I think finally I settled with some itty bitty ones. that kind of do the job, although it just doesn't look uh, perfectly authentic. Uh, another thing I experimented with this build was those two Terrier engines up on the sides. Um, with the center of gravity being so awkward because the, uh, you know, when the external fuel tank is on it, then the center is so low. When the fuel tank is jettisoned, then the center is back in the middle where my um, vector engines are. Uh, the, uh, the Terriers aren't in the perfect spot. I don't think I, I angled them or anything, but they, they do the trick. I think the actual space shuttle uses, uh, I'm not sure if it uses liquid fuel engines. I think it uses RCS um, to, to re-enter the atmosphere and to, to navigate and, and so forth in space. But I'm going to cheat. I'm actually going to use my vectors a little bit and my Terriers. Another mistake I made, didn't realize it until I was coming back down to the planet, was that front wheel. I actually raised it into the... Uh, to the, the the bay a little too much and the game thinks that it's in the uh, the payload so it doesn't allow me to, to lower the wheel in the front unless that that bay is open which uh, just you know makes it a little less realistic and uh, makes me uh, scramble at the last minute to open that bay and get that wheel extended here you can see me assembling the the external fuel tank I'm not sure if I made it uh, probably made it a little too long. I think I don't think it extends that far down, but um, I did want it to be as long or longer than these Clydesdale um, solid rocket boosters that are attached to it. So um, I was kind of using those as a point of reference because I'm pretty sure those boosters were modeled after the shuttle's boosters. And here you can see I'm just having a little trouble with the uh, radial or um, normal symmetry. So I think I ended up just doing it. Uh, without some symmetry, attaching those struts to make it nice and stable. I may be doing something wrong with these builds, but I find shuttles are pretty challenging to launch and land. Again, like, like I said, that external fuel tank and those boosters make the center of gravity move a lot. So to compensate, as you're gonna see in a little while, I'm gonna move the vector engines. I'm gonna turn them a little and tilt them, but it's hard to see how much to tilt because the uh, center of thrust is this tiny little uh, reticle in the center of uh, mass is so far away it's hard to see if they're perfectly aligned or not but I guess I get it close enough because this one flies okay um, landing is also uh, a cluster which you're gonna see and on this build I forgot to put parachutes if you might have noticed I, um, I believe the uh, actual shuttle uses parachutes it definitely helps you to slow down once you you, you, you touch down um, so on this first launch I'm not gonna have parachutes and then later I'll come back and add some Some of the ports in KSP are obvious references to real shuttle ports, like the fuselage and the wings. Less obvious though is those three main vector engines. They are direct references to the shuttle's main three KS-25 engines. They have an extreme gimbal range and a really high specific impulse. I think they have the highest specific impulse in KSP. There you can see me select my astronauts and nope, oh, first launch is not a success. I need to add a structural support there in the back of the fuel tank to stop this thing from tipping in that direction. So then I'm going to try again, 
and I'm, it's not going to be a, a, a pretty launch, but it will be effective enough. I did forget to turn my, my entire shuttle assembly so that the, the orbiter, the, the back of the orbiter would be facing east. So now I'm having trouble rolling the whole craft. I think the tank is supposed to be I get on top of the orbiter and the orbiter should be um, again facing east. But uh, this is this is going to do relatively stable. And you see the solid rocket boosters get jettisoned. They've still got lots of fuel on my apoapsis is way above the atmosphere. So I'm just going to coast up a little bit more and then I'll, I'll burn a little bit to keep me pointed in the direction I want to be pointed. But uh, not using much fuel now. I'll wait until I get up to the top of my uh, trajectory. And there you see I'm going to uh, use those the, the huge thrust of those vectors to circularize my orbit and put the orbiter into space. I'm going to stop burning just before my periapsis gets into the uh, out of the atmosphere so that the orange fuel tank will crash back down. I don't know how long the actual shuttles keep their fuel external fuel tank attached. Um, but again, I'm not going for realism. It's more of just a, a fun build and an interesting, challenging thing to do using shuttles. So um, there you see my periapsis is starting to starting to, to climb and I'll go ahead and detach and then get, give those terrier engines uh, a test. First the thing I'll use my vectors for a second but you can see that because they're pointed again they're not very useful uh, with that fuel tank detached. So I think I'm going to go ahead and shut down my vector engines and use my terriers for the rest of my uh, orbital adjustments. I think I leave my periapsis high like it is and I'm going to raise my uh, I'm sorry, my apoapsis is high. I'm going to raise my periapsis probably to meet it. So yeah, I realized those terriers uh, actually push push my nose down, so I do turn my vectors back on, but I um, lower the uh, thrust quite a, quite a bit, so they, they tend to balance. And now when I burn my engines, it keeps me relatively straight. So yeah, like I said, now I'm matching my periapsis and my apoapsis, and pretty soon you're going to get to see the, uh, the payload, this funny thing that I've built that I thought would be uh, worth sharing. So there you see the payload doors opening and out comes my surprise. I got it staged with some rockets. I, I did Google and I believe I am probably one of the only few folks that have actually built a drum set in Kerbal Space Program. Obviously not functional for multiple reasons. One, it's a little too big for Jeb to actually sit on that seat and play. And two, sound does not carry well in space. But uh, yeah, fun, fun fact, I, I did want to be a drummer back in... Uh, in middle school, a lifetime ago, I, I tried to sign up to uh, to be a drummer, and there were already, I think, ten students in class that wanted to be drummers. And the the band director told me that would that was too many, and I had to go and play a, a different instrument. The following year, there were only three drummers left, so uh, I was pissed. But uh, c'est la vie, such is life, and uh, I am not a drummer to this day. I don't know; I've never actually played. But uh, I think drum sets look cool, especially in KSP. So I'm gonna leave that one there in my sandbox and um, it'll, it'll float forever. Now it's time for the shuttle to re-enter the atmosphere. Like I said, this is the uh, probably the trickiest part. It's even trickier than the takeoff in my opinion. So um, ordinarily it would probably be a great idea for me to have all my fuel expended. So what I may do on my next build is uh, put one of those fuel exhausts so that I can, I can release the fuel without having to burn my engines because having too much fuel in the back of the craft is going to cause it to want to spin out of control. It's going to want all that weight to, to shift forward. And I don't have any empty tanks in the front to physically move the fuel. So I'll, I'll probably stay nose forward for a while, but you're going to see it's going to want to, um, to spin out of control. And most of that's because of my weight distribution. I'm also not entirely sure how much to, to lift my nose and, and, and brake like that, aero brake. As you can see, just that amount, it, it's shifting my trajectory quite a bit so I'm, I'm actually not going to come anywhere near the landing strip like I, I had hoped. I had way overshot my trajectory thinking that would be enough but apparently it was not nearly enough. So here you see me burning what's left of my fuel for my vectors to maintain maintain some stability. I'm trying to keep my my range up a little bit. I'm, I'm pointing pretty much per grade so I'm not air braking as much but there you go. The uh, craft is just so difficult to control. I don't know if it's uh, something I haven't perfectly tweaked as far as my control surfaces and my wings but uh, yeah this is pretty much every shuttle that I've ever flown tends to behave this way and I've only built I think two or three so uh, it's not a not a bad track record but it is a uh, um, not nearly as good as, as some of the other rockets that I've built so 
Here I'm going to just try to land it on the grass because obviously I'm not going to make it on the other side of that mountain range to the Kerbal uh, Space Center. But uh, yeah, I'm going nose down and it, I'm, I'm trying to pull up and it's it's just not, not pulling up. So Jeb and Bill, I apologize. I'm way too low now for you guys to eject. So we're going to... Yep, we're going to have to revert. And um, I'm going to speed up my second flight a whole lot just to show you guys that it can be done. This can be landed. On this build, I added parachutes. I, uh, I moved the front wheel, but apparently it wasn't enough because it's going to give me the same issue as the first launch. I did a few other minor tweaks, and the one that did the most as far as my uh, descent was I added those, um, those two front uh, fins. I'm trying to remember what they're called. Let me think. Ah, canards. Yes, they are canards. So I added, added two of those to the front of the shuttle so that I'd be a little more forgiving on the descent. I think I mentioned before canards, they probably do not behave very realistically in KSP. They, uh, they're supposedly very treacherous when you're in a, in a, a spin or a, a stall. But uh, in this case, they provide the lift that I need and um, basically resolve the issue that I have on landing. So, uh, yeah, I think I, uh, I'll go ahead and show the rest of the footage. There's my, my approach. I'm obviously, again, not going to make it all the way to the Kerbal Space Center, but I'm going to touch down there on the grass. Uh, so I guess before I wrap up the video, I wanted to mention I've got a few other ideas like this. Short videos, I try to keep them definitely less than 15 minutes. I'd love to make some less than 10 minutes, but it's kind of hard to cram uh, good footage with an explanation into a short span like that. So if you have any ideas of things you want to see me do or try to attempt, please leave a comment. If not, I'm going to keep chipping away at the list of things that I want to do. Maybe a few more series, although the series tend to be a little bit longer. But uh, I guess that about wraps it up. As always, I uh, hope you got something out of this video. video. If you did, please hit that like button or leave a comment. And I um, appreciate you tuning in. I will see you again soon.